Welcome to Jesus Inside Prison Ministry presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. We are providing a strong foundation in Christ and preparing men for a successful future. And now, here's Pastor Bumpus. Praise Jesus and welcome to today's program. I'm your host, Pastor William Bumpus, and you're watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry present Jesus House. And we come your way each week right here on the same station. Let me extend a uh, welcome to all of our Central Ohio uh, uh, viewers. Thank God for those that's been viewing our program. Uh, God has opened enlarged our tent, and now we are broadcasting on channel uh, C O A C B T V, C O A C B T V. And you can get that on Roku. It'll probably be on the screen. But we're broadcasting on that every Sunday evening. And so uh, at the same time you're watching it now, we'll be there each week on the same time. Jesus Inside Prison Ministry is just what it is. It's all about prison ministry. Uh, but I am Pastor William Bumpers. I was arrested 23 times, uh, uh, was a heromatic for 13 years, never, never knew Jesus, never had nobody in my family ever was saved. And on my last prison uh, experience in jail, uh, inmates shared the word of God with me. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I've been serving God ever since. That's been 43 years ago. And so that's why we come on here every week with testimonies and messages from uh, the uh, prison ministry angle. And we pray, glad that you've been tuning into the program and pray for you to keep on watching. I'll be right back. But they don't know the truth about all that other. And so when things come up on you, see, that's what kept me alive. What kept me alive was knowing, you know what I'm saying, this, number one, this ain't from God. God ain't trying to teach me nothing. Everything he want me to learn, I learned from the Holy Ghost. He's a teacher. And from his word right here, I'm in the will of God. I never forget, you know, I, uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, and heard all religious sayings, so I was praying, where did I open the door for this? That's another mistake we do. We do that. Where have I missed it at? And then that story comes to mind in the Bible about the blind man that was blind from birth. And the religious leader said, what sin did he do? Now, how did he do any sin he blind from birth? Other than just being born a sinner. And Jesus said, ain't no sin here. This is just for the glory of God. And the glory of God was not that the fact that he was blind. The glory of God was that Jesus came by and healed his blindness. That was the glory of God. So you don't have to do nothing. That's my point. As I bring it to a close, you don't have to do nothing. You ain't. You don't have. If you you don't have to do nothing to open up the door for the devil to attack you. That's his job. You know, Ephesians chapter six says we put on the weapons of our warfare, all of it, so that we can stand against the wiles. Of the devil. Now, uh, the theological, educational definition of wiles is evil schemes of the devil. But I, I, I preach to a people, amen, that way I can break it down a little bit more. And I always explain the wiles of the devil so people can understand. It's one thing to hear the word. If you can't understand it, then you can't use it. So I like to bring the word down to a working definition, something I could use now, what they call practical practical Christianity. So the wiles of the devil is like a two-year-old kid. Anybody ever had a two-year-old? My question is, what is it that they didn't get into? <laughs> you know, back in the day, they used to call them the terrible twos because a two-year-old child is into everything. You don't know where he's going at. You can't, you know, I mean, you, you got you to watch the stove. How I many know what I'm talking about? You got, I mean, he's in the, just whatever comes on his mind, that's what, it, that's what the wiles of the devil are. Whatever Satan just want, just decide to do, he's he just going to do it. And in other words, he's just going to keep on throwing stuff at you until something stick. Now, he knows it stick when you say something, ouch, uh-oh, that, that, that works. Hit him again right there. So we had to put on the war, weapons of our warfare, all of it, including praying in the spirit, 
every day. Building up yourself, Jude says, Jude 20, building up yourself, praying in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, that's in Ephesians chapter 6, that's one of the weapons of your warfare. It said praying all prayers in the Spirit. And when the gospel writers, when the gospel writers wrote about in the Spirit, they all talked about in tongues because all of them filled with the Holy Ghost. They weren't talking about some feeling, you know, fervently praying where you're sweating and snotting. And <laughs> He's talking about praying in tongues. That's one of your weapons. So you have to know what the word says, amen. Uh, you know, it was, I mean, four or five times during those six, seven, eight months of going through all that, you know, my skin turned black. You know, I got to the point where I couldn't eat. And I still had, I still was ignorant. I still was ignorant because they told me when it, when it started, now what we need to do is put a bag in here so we can feed you, you know, through a tube because your throat is going to swell, not my ass. I'm a faith man. Plus, I was still going to prison. I know you can't go to prison with no bag on. So I didn't, So I'm believing God. I tough it down. And I was toughing down water. It was so painful to drink water. It got so bad that I told my wife, she said, I, okay, I need to get that bag. I said, okay. I took. It got so bad, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go and get this bag. If it don't work, I'm going home. That's how bad it was. I got the bag. It was rougher. I mean, I could throw, but boy, putting that liquid in there. My good, you put it in there, it come out. I mean, you know. And so three or four times they had to rush me out to the emergency hospital. I got so weak that I couldn't hardly walk. I would have to go and use the restroom, you know, to urinate and pass out. I'll be in there urinating. Next thing I know, my family's picking me up off the floor. It was a miracle, miracle of God. I never hit the, the, the toilet or, the, you know, with my head or whatever. So it got, to the, got so weak that I, the only way I could use the restroom, I had to go and sit down to urinate. And Satan was shooting everything he can. What kept me going? It's not unto death. I heard a word from God. It's not unto death. It's not unto death. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. This has to get out of my body. This has to get out of my body. That's called the fight of faith. If it wasn't no fight, you wouldn't have to stand. Ephesians chapter 6 says, having done all, stand. And then what? Stand. And do what? And stand. Stand for what? Till you win. You're supposed to always win. 2 Corinthians says, God always causes us to triumph. We always win. The only way you don't win is you quit. And the devil's job is to get you to quit. The money ain't coming in. Quit Jesus. The job ain't coming in right. Quit Jesus. This ain't working right. Stop going to church. It ain't not me. It ain't nothing. Not, 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 not. And that's his job is to run you away from God. God's word is to run you back in him. Whatever comes my way, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But you got to act like it. And you win. Then all of a sudden, the they said uh, before the 33 Treatment was over, 33 treatments. That's five days a week. Five days a week. Six months. Go in there, get in the machine, they shoot you with this stuff, you know what I mean? You come out. And then go in there for chemo and you had to sit there three, four hours while they're running through your body. Then you got to go through all the symptoms with all of that. But it was worth every day of it. God didn't teach me anything. I learned some stuff. And I learned, as I said, God, what did I do to deserve, I mean, not deserve it, what did I do to open up the door? I told a pastor friend of mine this down in uh, <clears throat> Kentucky. He's a prophet. And we were sitting around eating. Shocked him. Because everybody knows you, you open the door somewhere. And the Lord told me, he said, uh, uh, what did I do? 
what did Jesus do for the devil to attack him? Nothing. Matthew, in Matthew chapter 4, it tells us, you know, Jesus was led up in the spirit by, by the devil, I mean, by, by, by the spirit, led him into the wilderness, and he was tempted while he was in the wilderness. I mean, is that right? Satan came to him. How many know Satan came to him? Three times. Amen. Try to, what, 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 what did Jesus do to deserve that? He just obeyed what his father told him. So don't be looking for because uh, see, if, you, if folk go through that, there. What did I do? What Satan help you? <laughs> He'll tell you. Well, you know what you did. You did that 155 years ago. God ain't never forgot it. You sold some wild oats. It's your old oats coming. <laughs> and if he can sell you on a lie, now he's got you. I do nothing to deserve it. The only thing I did is be saved. R.W. Schambach used to say, boy, if the devil ain't messing with you, you ain't saved. That's <laughs> what he said. If Satan ain't messing with you, you ain't saved. But we have to know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm going to close with this. Now, I learned about God not in control. Uh, I'm, I'm for, I've been saved now 43 years, and I learned about that 43 years ago. Because I, you know, I, I, in, I'm studying the Word of God in prison, Amen, and uh, and I'm studying and, and 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 I'm reading all this stuff about God knows your beginning from your end, and He planned your life all the way out. I'm thinking now, wait a minute. You mean God planned? For all them people I stuck up and all them people I robbed, I mean, burnt right at home, <laughs> he planned all of that to get me saved. Why ain't everybody in penitentiary saved? Move right along. I couldn't understand how a, a loving God would plan for me to hurt all the people I hurt and all the people that hurt me to get me. I couldn't understand it. And I'm trying to read it, and in, 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 in I, I couldn't understand it uh, until, but then I seen it. But then I, I, but I said, no, I know I, I, some things God revealed to you, keep it on the shelf. I said, I ain't touching this because I ain't never heard nobody saying that. God not in control. Everybody say God's in control. Everybody. So I ain't fooling with that. And then I got out, God, you know, and <clears throat> several years later, I'm in a prison in Michigan City, and um, a preacher. Uh, and uh, they hadn't remodeled it like they got it now. And and after I get through preaching, there's a guy. I'm talking about how God worked miracles. There's a guy. I'm on the stage, and there's a guy standing down there like this. You know what I mean? Service over with him, looking at me like this. So I'm thinking, uh oh, is this somebody from back in the day? <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me go down here and straighten this out now. So I go down there and I praise the Lord, brother. Yeah, praise the Lord. I used to believe all that stuff. I used to go to church all the time. Me and my family used to go to church all the time. He said, then somebody raped and killed my sister. And I went to the, my church and asked my pastor, why did that happen? Why did God allow that? And he said, you know, God, blah, blah, blah. He said, I could not understand how a loving God would allow my sister to get killed. And they're doing drugs and everything all down the street. He said, that's why I'm here. Because I found out who raped and killed my sister, and I took their life. Now, what are you going to tell that person? I said, well, brother, God didn't do it. I said, now, why your sister uh, is in heaven? I don't know. Maybe nobody prayed that day. I have no clue. I said, however, if she could come back, she wouldn't. Anybody ever sees Jesus, is over. I don't care how handsome you are. If your wife sees Jesus, just say goodbye. <laughs> but, I, I, but I was able to share with him, God didn't do that. And as a result of that, I led him to the Lord. 
It was another guy in there. I mean, man, this guy shocked me. Because when I go inside, you know, I'm watching everything. Amen. I'm watching. The Bible said, watch and pray. So I don't pray with my clothes. I don't pray in, in prison with my eyes closed. Lord, thank you for everybody here. Thank you for this service. <laughs> and, and I'm going in. I'm going in the chapel. And I ain't in it long. Here's a big uh, white gentleman. He was about 6'5". And he, oh, Pastor grabbed me before I knew it. Had me up. I'm saying, boy, if I was his enemy, it was over. And then I recognized him. I had met him years ago in a jail. This guy uh, was a truck driver. And his wife was cheating on him. And he came in town one day, found out his wife was cheating on him. And somebody said that she was at this bar. He took his rig, his, his, his semi, and ran it through the bar, going to kill her and everything in there. He it, it tore the bar up, killed some folk, but didn't get her. And uh, this was years ago. And uh, we was go I was going down to jail pretty regularly. People called. And this woman called and said that her brother was down to jail, which was him. And he was suicidal. Would you go down there and uh, and pray with him? So I go down there and uh, call the guy out. You know, his, his eyes is red. You know, you, you can see he's been been been, been uh, uh, crying. And uh, I called him out, and I'm talking to him about you. He just bawling, and he was, "Why did God let me do that?" That's what he was saying. All the time I was driving the truck, I was praying, God, don't let me do it. Don't let me do it. Why did God let me do it? I said, because he couldn't stop you. You had your mind made up. God cannot change your mind. He gave you free will. He can't make you get saved. He can't make nobody do nothing. If God was in control, and this is one I use all the time where guys in the joint, if God was in control, what about the guy that rapes and kills babies? You mean God allowed that? No. God allows what you allow. Quiet in this great Baptist church. That's all right. I like Baptist church. I'll say that again. God allows what you allow. Why is that? This is your planet. God don't live here. You know, there's a place where God lives at. It's called heaven. It's a real place. I said it's a real place. God don't live down here. Wait a minute. Here's another one. Jesus don't live down here. The Bible said he's seated right now on the right hand of God the Father. The Holy Ghost is down here. But God didn't create planet Earth for himself. He created it for you. Created it for you. Genesis 1, 26 gave you dominion or control over everything on the planet. Everything on the planet was supposed to obey you. But, at, but Eve, but the devil tricked Eve out of it. He became the God of the planet. He became your spot. He took your spot. He took your spot. Satan took your spot. He took Adam's spot. Jesus came and gave our spot back to us. We're supposed to be operating that dominion that we're supposed to have had, that we had in the garden. That's why he's, Jesus said, and that's why Jesus came and showed us. That's how he came and showed us. By speaking to trees, speaking to wind, speaking to storms, speaking to arms, speaking to eyes. Jesus came and showed us this is what you supposed to be doing. He said the same things you see me do, you should do these same things and even greater than these that you do because I go unto the Father. He gave us our dominion back. But Christians don't know they got it, so they don't take authority over it. So everything come, God did it. God allowed it for some reason. No, he allowed it because we allowed it. Don't get nervous because I'm preaching very good. When a storm comes near, near our house, my wife wakes me up. Hey, hey, it's lightning out there. I don't get up and say, oh, my God. No, shut up out there. Quit. 
get back up in the air. And I turn over and go to sleep. <laughs> Excuse me, but ain't that what Jesus did? Uh, didn't he tell us to do it? Well, if you don't do it, gonna, the devil's going to tear your house up. Why good things happen to bad people? Because it's supposed to be built on a rock. And maybe it's a rock you got it on, but I mean, not y'all, but I'm saying, you know, people watching my Facebook. It has to be based on, it has to be based on the truth of God's word and not what we think God's word says. We have the commit, we have the dominion. So we're supposed to win in life. For the win in life. He said, but my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, when I when I when I found that, when I found that out, then I said to myself, well, well, I started where I was started at. I stopped hustling in prison. You know, having a store. You know, some people know what I'm talking about. You know, little stuff like that. <laughs> I stopped doing that because I said, now, if I can't believe him in here, you know, I'm going to have to do a little something on the outside. So I began to believe God for me. It easy to get mad. And I got outside. Never forget. And God called me to do prison ministry. He walked into my cell. So I knew what I was called to do. I got outside. I didn't know how to do it. So anyway, I went to the library, found out how to do it. I got myself, got incorporated and everything. Doors wasn't open. Well, doors couldn't open I, because I was still on four years worth of paper to do. You know, so I'm believing God and everything was rough and everything. And I and and before I mean I I mean I wasn't even out a year. And I'm working my job. And God speak to me on my job and told me, quit your job. You can't work and do what I called you to do. And I wasn't going nowhere. So I quit. Went home and told my wife, the Lord told me to quit my job. She said, you wait till I get to church tell the pastor. <laughs> she said, they, they told me not to marry no ex-convict. They told me y'all were lazy. Wait till I get to church. She went to church and told my pastor. And uh, my pastor had a prophecy. He had tongues and interpretation. And he prophesied to me. He stood on me. Thus says the Lord, you better get back on that job. Because if you don't, the Lord said you're going to steal something and they're going to lock you under the penitentiary. So I called them people the next day and begged for my job back. I went back to work. And I kept hearing that still small voice. I told you to leave. No. I bind this devil in Jesus' name trying to send me back to penitentiary, you know. And, and, uh, and then uh, three or four months later, I'm cleaning my screen. I was a preacher silk screen printer and I'm cleaning my screen and pushing the trash down in the trash container and I'm pushing it down in there and I fall over in the trash uh, thing and God was in the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> he said, I told you to leave this job. <laughs> so I come out like I got paint all over my face. Eyes that big because I didn't hear the voice of God. And I walked and I told them, I got to quit. They said, yeah, get on out of here because you can't, you can't come back. And I'll never forget, I didn't have nothing. Married my wife. When I met my wife, she had four kids. She had welfare, food stamps, amen. And <laughs> live, <laughs> living in a mama's house. And, uh, and so here I come. And, and 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 so I'm. We ain't got nothing. I'm walking home. No, I ain't got nothing. No transportation. Ain't got no ministry. I ain't going nowhere. I know what God called me to do, but I ain't going nowhere. Ain't no doors open. And I'm walking. And I never forget. I asked God. I said, Okay, well, how am I gonna live? And He said, I'll take care of you. Now that's been 42 and a half years. I haven't had a secular job in 42 and a half years. And my church is paid off, full ex-convicts. Jeter's house is paid, paid off in cash. Got a nice house, drive good, eat good. 
travel all over the world, preaching in prisons and jails, and ain't never missed a meal since that day. I'm here to tell you God can meet your need whether you got a job or not. If you can believe it, he'll do it. You don't have to backslide because things ain't going right. Just believe God. Amen. Y'all get anything out of that? Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Thank y'all. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for watching today's program. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm your host, William Bumpus, and uh, we here every week at the same time. So we'll be back next week at the same time. Thank you for all of our new uh, viewers. Remember my book offer, What Faith Is. Uh, you can write in for any size donation and uh, receive that book or any of my uh, books or any of my material. Let me also say that we appreciate any and all gifts that you send towards JIPL. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. God bless. Final words to those that are watching, I uh, pray that you will continue to uh, continue to support us, amen. And then those that are thinking about it, I pray that the Lord uh, leads you to become a partner with what we're doing, in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry Presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. To learn more about the Jesus House, to receive books by Pastor Bumpus, subscribe to our podcast, and to support Jesus Inside Prison Ministry, log on to www.jipm.org.